If you're a photographer who's a nature lover and you've always wanted to get super close to wildlife with a long lens, we've scoped out an alternative that might be just what you need. Photographers understand that getting close to a distant subject requires a long zoom or telephoto lens, and some of those can get incredibly expensive. For example, Canon has an amazing 1200 millimeter lens that costs more than most luxury cars, and it's as big and heavy as a small child. So what if you could get a long lens that lets you focus even further away? One that's lightweight enough to hold in one hand, and it can be easily disassembled to fit in a camera bag or a backpack. And what if I told you that very same long lens was weather sealed enough that if you dropped it into a mud puddle, you could pick it up, rinse it off, and there'd be no problems with it. What I'm describing here is a spotting scope, and there have been some impressive developments for photographers who want to use the reach and the quality of first-rate scopes from companies with a leading reputation for scope optics like Swarovski. They've been developing their reputation in optics for more than 60 years and now they make professional adapter kits for DSLRs and point and shoots that let you capture images using their scopes. And some of the images you can get are just incredible. Taken on its own, using a spotting scope isn't terribly difficult. So how hard could it be to add a camera to a scope? You might think, well, it's just a matter of getting adapters and a good tripod to start digiscoping. There's quite a bit more to it than that, and that's what I want to talk to you about in these two videos. If you know what you'll need and what to expect, you'll enjoy the experience quite a bit more. Let's start by talking about the gear. Modular Swarovski spotting scopes consist of two halves. The front half is called the objective lens, and the back half is called the observing module or the eyepiece. Unlike camera lenses, objective lenses of scopes are described by their diameter, 65 millimeter, 85 millimeter, 95, and so on. And the zoom range is similar on all three of these lenses. It's actually 25x to 60x on both the 65 and 85 millimeter objective lenses, and 30x to 70x on the 95 millimeter lens. Now, keep in mind, the focal lengths are a product of the objective lens optics combined with the eyepiece optics. Theoretically, if Swarovski ever came out with a different eyepiece, now I don't think this is going to happen anytime soon, the zoom range could be different. Current Swarovski scopes have two eyepiece options depending on the shape you want. The zooming actually happens in the observing module, and the amount of zoom is the same with either eyepiece shape. Swarovski's new X-series spotting scope eyepieces contain prisms and specially coated optics and a zoom ring. And what makes X-series eyepieces unique is that they're available as straight or angled. The straight eyepiece mounts in line with the objective lens, and the angled eyepiece is inclined 45 degrees. So let's talk about which eyepiece shape is best for traditional photographers. You might think it's the straight one, since that's most like what we're used to. That may be true, but when you first set up a scope for photography, you'll discover that vibration and movement is harder to control than you might be used to, even with a really solid tripod. So if you have to raise the center column of your tripod in order to get a good scope and camera position without bending over at the knees or twisting your neck up, your tripod may become less stable. On the other hand, if you use an angled eyepiece, your tripod and scope can be several inches lower, and that means it's going to be more stable on your tripod. A small bend at the waist and no neck twisting is far more comfortable. Now, there are two series of Swarovski objective lens components that you'll find at B&H, each with a few diameter options. There's an ATS series and an ATX series. Now, if you're buying the X series, You'll be able to choose straight or angled viewing by the selection of your eyepiece. Again, with the S series, the viewing configuration is determined by the objective lens. On the X series scopes, the viewing configuration is determined by the eyepiece. 
Additionally, whether you want an adapter for a DSLR or a universal point-and-shoot camera adapter, you'll need to make sure that you get the proper one for the series of scope you have. You can't mix and match objective lenses, eyepieces, or adapters from one series to the other. Don't worry if this seems a little confusing because you can always call B&H and talk with a sales representative who can help you get the right scope and adapter for your setup. One other quick note about the optics of these modular scopes is that the measurement ratings used to describe the lenses refer to the diameter of the front opening, not the focal length. A 95mm objective lens is not going to give you the same view as zooming your camera's kit lens to 95mm. So, calculating your actual focal length equivalent requires that you know about the camera you're using, the sensor size, the objective lens, and the eyepiece that you're using, and whether or not you've zoomed the scope. But just to give you an example, I had a straight eyepiece on a Nikon D7100 using a 95mm scope that could accept 30 to 70x magnification from that eyepiece, and my focal length equivalent range was from 1350 millimeters to 3150 millimeters. Now compare that to the 1200 millimeter Canon lens I mentioned earlier, and it's a small fraction of the size and the price. So here's the basic rundown. A Swarovski objective lens and eyepiece combo with a model name that has some letter followed by TS whether it's an angled or a straight scope, is an older series spotting scope. While these are great quality scopes, they have one drawback for photographers that the newer scopes don't have. Specifically, while the focus ring is easily reached, the zoom ring is underneath the camera adapter assembly. So you can adjust the zoom, you just need to remove and then reseat the camera adapter. The newer series of objective lenses and eyepieces that has a product name with a letter followed by TX, has the zoom dial right by the connection to the objective lens. That way, you can zoom and focus without any interference from the camera adapter at all. If you've just gotten started with digiscoping and you don't own any scope components yet, I strongly recommend this newer X series. The costs are all quite similar for similarly equipped scopes, and the adapters for photography cost about the same, whether you're using one series or the other. So it just makes sense to go with the series that's easier to use with camera adapters. If you plan to use a DSLR camera on your Swarovski scope, you'll need something called a TLS APO. Essentially, it's a special 30 millimeter lens for your DSLR that has a special housing that marries with your scope. Theoretically, you could use it on your camera to take 30 millimeter photos, but you wouldn't want to do that because there's no focus ring on that 30 millimeter lens. Remember, your scope has its own focus ring, so there's no need for one on the 30 millimeter adapter. Additionally, it comes with an eyepiece adapter sleeve that you'll need to screw onto your scope eyepiece. That way, the TLS APO mounts very nicely on the eyepiece, and then the thumb screw on the outside of the TLS APO tightens down on the sleeve rather than on the body of the eyepiece itself. One last note about the TLS APO is that you'll need to add a Swarovski T2 adapter ring to the narrow end of it so that you can mount it to your Nikon or your Canon or your Micro Four Thirds mount camera. T2 adapters are sold separately. On the other hand, if you plan to use a point-and-shoot camera, you can skip the TLS APO and T2 mount adapter altogether and instead pick up something called a DCB2 swing adapter. They make a DCB2 for either the older series scopes or the newer ATX and STX scopes, and the necessary mounting adapters come with it. What's really great about this adapter is that it's usable with a surprisingly wide variety of cameras, and when you're not using it, you can quickly just flip it up and out of the way with the camera still on it. Now, you use the spotting scope normally, and when you're ready to take a shot, you flip the camera back into place, and you turned it on because it probably timed out and went to sleep, you reset your zoom amount, and then you start taking pictures. We'll talk about how to set your zoom and photography techniques in part two of this series. As far as tripods and heads go, there are a couple things to consider. First, a rig with a long scope and camera is a lot of gear spread over the balance point of your tripod head. Because the slightest vibration will affect your picture, 
and because it takes a long time for some of those vibrations to die down, you should consider a Swarovski spotting scope rail. This makes it much easier to not only center the weight of your scope and camera assembly, but it supports the scope over several inches rather than just the small balancing point of the scope foot. Additionally, the center of gravity changes when you add a DSLR to your scope and this rail allows you to quickly readjust the balancing point. The other consideration is that video style fluid pan heads with a pan and tilt handle are usually a better form factor for digiscoping rather than a still photography ball head. You'll find yourself wrestling with traditional ball heads a bit more just to make your adjustments. So that's a good overview of available Swarovski digiscoping gear. Up next, we'll get into the fun stuff, shooting things that are football fields or even miles away, and some tips for getting the best possible results from your digiscoping experience. Make sure to watch part two, and I'll see you there. For b and and Kelby Training, I'm Larry Becker. Thanks for watching. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.